All right, good morning. First of all, I want to thank everybody for the. Uh, let's go ahead and check our radios, everybody. I want to thank everybody for your patience, you guys. Uh, I'm going to go over this incident, uh, and then uh, we'll open up any questions. At about 11.51 p.m. Uh, today, uh, officers uh, attempted... It's okay. Okay, let's start again. Today at about 11.51 p.m., officers attempted to make a traffic stop uh, around Beltway 8 and 59. Uh, the suspect vehicle immediately attempted to uh, evade arrest and a pursuit ensued, a very short pursuit. At about 11.54 p.m., the suspect went into uh, an area near Bissonette and 59 uh, on Surface Street and uh, he was able to elude captured by the officers, momentarily uh, elude captured by the officers by 11.57 p.m. A record driver uh, called in 911 and advised that the suspect vehicle was located in the 10,100 block of Forum Park behind me. The suspect vehicle was a white Mercedes-Benz uh, SUV. Uh, officers immediately started responding to the area and uh, uh, they were able to locate the, the vehicle. The vehicle uh, was occupied by a male white adult. Uh, the adult uh, male uh, exited the vehicle and uh, uh, unfortunately came out with a with a revolver in his hand. We had three officers that had, uh, had guns on the suspect, a two-man unit with two male officers and a female unit who had gone around the two-man unit and boxed in the suspect. So they were in a triangulation uh, type of approach. Uh, the suspect came out with the gun, raised it at the, uh, towards the female officer. Uh, it appears preliminary. It looks like he might have fired a couple of rounds at her. Uh, she was struck twice in the right arm. Uh, and uh, despite being struck in the right arm, she was actually able to return fire along with the two male officers uh, here at this location. At about, uh, as soon as the officers uh, uh, shot at the suspect and he went down, uh, he still had the gun in his hand. Uh, unfortunately, let me just make something really clear. Our officers gave a lot of commands to this suspect to show his hands, to put his hands up. He did not do that. Instead, he came up with a gun, shot at our officer, our female officer. It appears that he struck her twice uh, in the right arm uh, when, uh, when uh, the gunshots and the return gunfire ensued. Once the officers were able to uh, secure the suspect, they immediately applied a tourniquet to him. Uh, shortly after they applied the tourniquet and they were monitoring him for breathing, they realized that he had stopped breathing and they began CPR. Uh, shortly after they began CPR on the, the solo suspect, HFD pronounced, uh, arrived on scene, took over primary care, and at about 12.15 a.m., Medic 68 pronounced the suspect deceased here at the scene. Uh, our officer that was shot in the arm, again, was, re was able to return fire and uh, once uh, once they were once he was uh, withdrew to a safer position behind a police car sorry commander right behind a police car over here one of the backup officers actually was involved in the shooting applied a tourniquet uh, to her arm uh, and uh, shortly thereafter she was transported by our own police officers to southwest memorial and she was transported about uh, 12.07 a.m uh, it's important to note in this case that the suspect uh, again, uh, did not comply with the officers, was actually armed, and actually it appears that he shot a couple times at our officer and struck her in the right arm. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say that the officer who was shot, uh, she is at the hospital, she is uh, conscious, she's alert, she's stable, and she's surrounded by family and her colleagues. The officer that was shot uh, is Jasmine J.S. J-A-S-M-I-N-E, Jasmine uh, Sele, S-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. uh, I think I pronounced it right, Mike. Uh, Sele, who has two and a half years on the job and has been with the department for two and a half years and is uh, assigned to Westside uh, Patrol. The other two officers that uh, engaged the suspect after he fired on Officer Sele uh, is Officer uh, Kevin Smith. He's a three-year officer with the Houston Police Department 
and Officer Israel Maldonado, Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, Smith, common spelling, three years, and Israel, as in the state of Israel, Maldonado, M as in Mary, A-L-D-O-N-A-D-O, a, -O, a four-year member of the department. Both of those officers are assigned to South Gesner Town. The uh, uh, Houston uh, Forensic Science Center is here. Our Special Investigations Unit is here. Uh, the Internal Affairs is here. Obviously, our executive team is here. Our command staff is here. Uh, and uh, we're all here to uh, check on uh, our officers, but also to conduct an investigation. Internal Affairs when conduct the administrative investigation to look at this incident from beginning to end uh, to ensure that everything was, every, our actions were consistent with policy, procedures, and training. The Special Investigations Unit is here that will conduct a criminal investigation uh, into this incident. Uh, as well as the Harris County District Attorney's Office Civil Rights Division that will be here and part of this investigation. Uh, and so once the, uh, once the officers leave here today, obviously they will be placed on administrative leave. Administrative leave, not suspended. Administrative leave, which means an administrative uh, duty pending the outcome of the investigation. And so with that, I'll open up to any questions. I just want to thank our command staff for always being out here with, uh, with our men and women. And this just illustrates the dangers that our officers uh, face. You know, my thoughts uh, go out to the deceased suspect's family. You know, this is somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's somebody's family member, and our thoughts are with them. Uh, and I extend my condolences to them. But uh, this incident was all captured on body-worn cameras. As you all know, the city has invested uh, in, in this technology for a reason. Uh, it's part of being transparent. And I'm uh, glad to report that the incident is captured on three separate body-worn cameras that captured this incident. Uh, so with that, I will open it up to any questions. Chief, you said the original reason for the stop <clears throat> was traffic violation? It was a traffic violation. The suspect, rather than uh, yielding, uh, attempted to flee. A pursuit ensued, a very short pursuit. He uh, actually went over some curbs and stuff. He's in a, in a, uh, in a Mercedes-Benz SUV. Uh, our officers were in a low in a Capri that's uh, really low to the ground, they weren't able to go over uh, some obstructions that he went over to, to, to avoid being captured. Uh, but a few minutes left later, after we lost sight of him, a tow truck driver actually picked him up here, spotted him, called it in, and we were able to come and uh, uh, con uh, contact the suspect who again came out of the car. The officers gave very clear commands to put his hands up. And you see some hands, and instead of complying with those commands, he came up with a handgun. Uh, looks appears to be a revolver and shot our officer appears that she's been struck twice by him and that's when they returned fire what any, else any information on the vehicles that stolen was there anything we don't, found on the vehicle? we don't have any information on that yet they'll be part of the investigation the vehicle will be processed and uh, we'll be looking for evidence and uh, we'll report that back later on they'll be part of our investigation was your officer taken by ambulance no i i addressed that earlier our our officer at about uh uh, 12.07 uh, a.m., uh, uh, just a few minutes after the shooting, was placed in a police car by members of the Houston Police Department, and it was transported by our members to Southwest Memorial. She walked in uh, on, her own, uh, on her own power, under her own power, and uh, she's in a stable condition and, and as good a spirit as can be uh, following this incident. I'm just very glad that she's alive and that her injuries, uh, her wounds, are, uh, appear that she will be able to recover from those wounds. Was the vehicle found here parked? Or did the crash? vehicle was stopped here, uh, facing the wrong way behind us. And it was spotted by a tow operator who called us. And our units responded when we found them and uh, eventually engaged the suspect. Again, this illustrates the dangers faced by uh, police officers in our, in, our, in our city, in our country. Uh, if you look around the country in the last uh, couple, of, in the last few weeks, uh, we've had a lot of officers murdered. Uh, killed by gunfire, and we're just very fortunate tonight that this young officer has been on only for about two and a half years, uh, that, uh, that she's going to be okay, and I thank God for that. And, and, and uh, I'm amazed at, uh, after reviewing these videos, at how, how well she kept her composure, how courageous she, she stood in the fight, she stayed in the fight, uh, and not to mention the fact that uh, this suspect uh, does not comply, flees, comes out with a gun, uh, uh, looks like he shot her twice, and our officers, as soon as they were able to secure him, kicked the gun out of his hand, uh, immediately rendered a life-saving aid or attempted to save his life by administering tourniquets 
and uh, once they needed to, they started CPR. Uh, HFD did their, their, their phenomenal job that they always do. They got here shortly. Uh, when the shots rang out, the officers immediately called for uh, HFD, and they actually called for uh, more than one unit because they knew they had the one officer shot and a suspect down. And it just talks to, I think it speaks to the, the, the heart of our officers. Uh, they did something tonight that no officer wakes up anticipating, wanting, desiring to do. But uh, once they were able to uh, secure the suspect, again, they went into life-saving mode, which I think just speaks to the, the professionalism and the training of the men and women in the Houston Police Department.